Are you trying to work out which sport is right for you or which sport is right for your child? Welcome to The Daily Gap. Today on The Daily Gap, we'll be discussing sports. And I gotta say, thank you so much for dropping in and I hope you're having an amazing day. It's Hamish here again and I love sport. I have loved sport my entire life. I've played a lot of different sports. Some of them were mental sports as well, by the way. Believe it or not, academia is a mental sport. And that is what I'm actually undertaking at the highest level I ever have right now in terms of my output, in terms of my work rate. So you might be thinking, what has that got to do with sport itself? Okay, so there's some things about sport that we could really benefit from. Firstly, skill levels, work ethic, working in a team, community, camaraderie, and you actually make some lifelong friends when you start out in these communities and they're really aligned. So if you're trying to work out how to become more active and you want to get into a sport, it doesn't need to be a top level Olympic athletic style sport. It can be anything. It can be golf, darts, chess, studying, the book club. These are all analogies, right? For the one thing, which is progress. Sport is a tool to help us progress. What, is it, what does it help us progress with? It helps us progress with our mind because we need to use our mind in order to move our body. It helps us improve with our body because it's a physical activity. And if it's not a physical activity, that's we can study to do other physical activities as well. These academic type sports are extremely valuable because they teach us how to critically think, they teach us how to solve problems, and they teach us how to be tenacious and resilient in tough situations. So you would understand that there's a certain level of mind and body going into every single sport. What theory do we need to know? What skills do we need to know in our minds and then ex execute in, on the games or in the trainings or in the practices or anything like that? Now, the, the one thing that I learned about sport, looking back over my, my formative years, are there, there are key aspects of my genetics and my body that long distance running type sports were not necessarily uh, the, the best for me. So as a result, what I ended up doing are things like cross country, not really a middle distance runner compared to some other guys that I went to school with, but I did that. And there were other sports like cricket. I'm a very power-based athlete. There are other sports like soccer, very good at running forward and kicking hard and kicking fast and tackling strong, not so good at coming back. So I'm looking at my key attributes that I've learned over those years in other sports and see what am I actually good at. So if you're coming back into sport or if you're brand new, you might want to look at what am I physically designed to do? That, that might be something that relates to you. You might also think, well, how do I want to feel? How do I want to feel when I'm playing my sport? Okay, well, do you want to play it alone? Like martial arts is a, is a typical, it's a single person sport where you compete against someone else. Or do you want to play tennis? Or do you want to play golf? You know, the sport itself is played just you. You're your own team, except you will play against one opponent or four opponents in, in, in the case of golf. And so how do you want to feel? You want to feel like fluid and you know, the way that you move? Or do you want to like be really up close and personal? Do you want to play rugby? You know, when you want to tackle someone or Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, where you, you're constantly intertwined with another opponent. The, asking these questions will lead you down a rabbit hole, which undoubtedly will give you the sport or the sports that you are looking for. And I, for one, only just discovered the true benefit, of, and this is my personal example, of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And I'm not repping it, it's just what happened to me because I've played a lot of different sports from very early on, from like five years of age at clubs probably even before that, at home with my father and my brother. But I only just realized that certain types of sports have energetic imprints on us. And I heard it on a motivational video that if you want to combat anxiety, go do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And that was so profound to me because what I had discovered when doing Jiu Jitsu, that my levels of well, stress and mental stress and mental fatigue and processing information during stressful environments 
those, all those problems had, had alleviated over the time that I'd done Jiu Jitsu. And when someone said it on a motivational speak or speech, I, it solidified it for me. And I was like, yeah, this is incredible. So that's why I bring this up in a daily gap situation because we can choose a sport, but does it meet our goals? What are our goals? What are our mind, body, spirit goals? What are our fitness goals? What are our health goals? What are our physical ailments that we need to take into account as well? And then what goals do we have to, um, to, to go in adjacent to those, to those ailments? Do you suffer from some, some back issues? Do you suffer from some leg issues, some knee issues, some, some joint issues, some nerve issues? What are there issues wise that we need to work on? And I can tell you that if you, don't necessarily want to go do a sport per se and compete and be with other people. Being mobile and moving is about the biggest gift that we have when it comes to our body. And subsequently, being immobile is, a, is basically akin to, to death when it comes to life itself. So do not think that you need to go out there and, and have the same energy that I have, whereas like, I go out and just kick ass and, and exert myself to 100%. Today, if you're in pain, my goal would be, if, I, if that was me, my goal would be to find a way to alleviate that pain and to move. When you move, you're enabling yourself to break free from the shackles that pain and mental imprisonment create. Now I know that sounds paradoxical because a lot of what we hear when we go to see professionals, they will tell us to rest, recover, recuperate, keep it still, that kind of stuff. It's not going to fix the problem. <laughs> Somewhat of the problem will become fixed, but it won't happen for you. There's always these extraneous things. Like for example, I'll give you an example, tennis elbow. Tennis elbow is a myofascial problem. And what that is, is there's a silvery skin that goes over all of the muscles there. Each muscle have its own little silvery skin. And if you've ever cut up a big rump steak, you'll see that big silvery skin on top of the huge big rump steak that you can buy from the bushes. That silvery skin is known as fascia and fascia gets really stubborn sometimes and it's super tough and fibrous. So if you've ever cut through a piece of gristle in a steak, that's part of the fascia, of the fascia construct. Now, tennis elbow, I've had it too. It's a fascial issue and you release that through slow, loving motions. You put your thumb or have someone else put their thumb or their fingers on that region and apply heat and pressure to the degree that might cause some discomfort. Now, that discomfort is actually a signal for you to understand that you're in the right spot, that you are finding that place of pain and you, if you know what you're doing, if you're licensed, if you're accredited, you can do this on others, but if you wanna do it on yourself, it's totally free. There's, there's no problems at all. You can actually massage that fascia gently or strongly or however you wanna do it and you will alleviate that tension. It is going to create pain in the process. So if you are in physical, mental or emotional pain right now, understand that movement forward is the kind of movement I'm interested in. And what that looks like is, is you having a structured idea about what the next step would be and then the next step and then the next step. And then to have a really good support team around you so that you can become a human being again, so to speak, if you've been immobilized. And that's why things like sport are so, so powerful because we're doing it in a team or with other people, we're learning new skills, we're hopefully having that camaraderie, camaraderie that goes with it. And simultaneously, we're bringing that life vitality to us with hanging out with other people and doing things that we love. This is the kind of attitude I'd like to, for people to bring into their professional settings as well. So it's not just somewhere you go to make money, but it's somewhere you go to create a collective goal as well as individual goals. So when you help someone out at work, albeit it's not a sporting field, it's not a tennis game, it's not a, uh, a billiard match or anything like that, and there's no money to be won, there is in fact a collective goal, which is to make money for the business that you work for and for you to get, to, to get a paycheck and for you to, um, and as a team, to collectively achieve the key performance indicators each and every day so that business thrives. And when you can get really, really immersed in that, life becomes somewhat like sport, but it also becomes somewhat very nurturing too. Because if you have that stress in your life and you have that constant stress, your sport becomes your ailment. And I don't want that for anyone. So thank you so much for, <laughs> for tuning in today. And until we next speak, believe in you.